Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Matt Rule, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, have built a phenomenal class in 2024. And as National Signing Day coming up tomorrow, sounds like they are trending to add a few more bodies to this 2024 class that could mean massive things for this Nebraska program. I want to do two things. One, talk about this class that Nebraska has coming in in 2024, a class that we've talked about extensively over the last couple of months says really feeling like a special class in terms of what they can do over the next couple of years. And then take a look at what these two potential commitments adding into this 2024 class could mean for this Nebraska program. Really excited to get into this one before we get into it. Just want to say thank you to you guys. And as always a massive shout out to the Nebraska fans. This is a program that the boys love talking about and the amount of support you guys continue to show, whether it's the deep dives into this roster, whether it's the transfer portal, whether it's the high school recruiting trail, cannot thank you guys enough. All the go big reds, all the nice comments, that stuff means the world to the boys. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And it sounds like we might be talking a lot more Nebraska football on the recruiting trail in the next 24 hours. So we'll continue to keep you guys updated. And without further ado, I want to get into this class and first start off with what this class in 2024 looks like. It's the best class Nebraska has signed since that 2019 cycle. And I think what stands out to me the most is you're bringing in a elite class from the high school ranks in 2024, but you're also marrying that with some really nice transfer portal additions. And from a roster construction standpoint, that's exactly how it should look like in my mind, right? You're building a roster. You want the bulk of your guys coming into the program, coming from the high school ranks, getting developed within the program, but using the transfer portal at certain positions that you want to fill in some gaps. And I think Nebraska did a phenomenal job going out and grabbing Isaiah Nayor, Jamal Banks, Dante Dotto to kind of fill in some maybe question marks you have in terms of the experience and depth that you have in this roster, but also continuing to get the traction on the recruiting trail. I think this was a masterclass job over the last couple of months to get this transfer portal and high school class squared away. And you take a deeper dive into this Nebraska class in 2024 and you take a little checklist to what you have, I mean, you're checking off a lot of boxes at premium positions, starting with the quarterback spot, right? Dylan Raola gets a, a lot of the attention, obviously, and rightfully so. Extremely talented quarterback, obviously the legacy, five-star guy, really, really talented arm. We've talked about Dylan Raola extensively, but you also have a guy in Danny Kalen, and you're a Nebraska fan sitting and looking at this 2024 class and saying, we feel really good about the quarterback play over the next couple of years, but you start looking at some other positions, right? The offensive line, Grant Bricks, again, a guy that was coveted by almost every single power five program across the country. You also bring in a guy like Preston Tumoa, a guy that again, Grant Bricks might get a lot of the attention, but a guy like Preston Tumoa also really helping this offensive line and make no mistake about it. You look at what Matt Rule and how he wants to build this roster. It starts along the line of scrimmage, landing two offensive linemen to the caliber like that. I mean, you're extremely excited about what this offensive line looks like over the next couple of years. You add the wide receiver list, Ja'Cory Barney, Isaiah McMorris, Davon Hall. It's a loaded group. It's checking a lot of boxes. But if you scroll down and kind of look at this 2024 class from a bird's eye approach, maybe one position that you wish Nebraska maybe attacked a little bit more was along that defensive line. And I think this is why the potential commitment of Keona Willite would mean massive things for this Nebraska program and getting into Keona Willite and if and when he commits to Nebraska, we'll hop on and do a little bit of a deeper dive, get into the film, talk about what he brings to the table. But two things that stand out. One, I think this was a position group that Matt Rule wanted to continue to add to in this 2024 class. And more importantly, from a, from a scheme fit, Keona Willa, I think, fits what Nebraska wants to do to an absolute T. Kind of reminds me of Cam Lenhart in that 2023 class in terms of a defensive lineman that has the athleticism and the length to play at that edge position, but also the frame to put on some weight and play on the inside as well. And you look at what Tony White wants to do on the defensive side of the football I mean, he wants versatile defensive linemen. He wants guys that could play the three tech, could play the edge spot, move all along that defensive line. And a guy like Keona Willie certainly checks those boxes at 6'4", 240. We'll get into the film more if he ends up committing to Nebraska. But 
couple of things that have stood out as I've dove into it. One, you love the length. I mean, 6'5", 240, he uses that length at an extremely high level. He's a phenomenal athlete when it comes to operating in space and plays the run so well. I mean, this guy is strong at the point of attack, always keeping that outside shoulder free and making plays in the run game. And when you talk about defensive linemen, the first thing you want to talk about is how can you get after the passer? And no doubt, Keona Willett with the length and burst off the ball that he has certainly checks that box. But I think Keona Willett really brings a ton of run stopping ability to this Nebraska front. And again, a defensive line class that maybe you wish you took another body or two. Keona Willett coming from Arizona would mean massive things for this class. And kind of a wild story for him was committed to Washington. Obviously, Kalen DeBoer takes the job at Alabama, backs off his commitment, gets released of his NLI. And you saw Arizona come in, you saw UCLA come in, you saw Michigan State come in, and it looks like Nebraska is probably in the driver's seat for this recruitment coming down the home stretch. Keona Willett, a guy that really does excite me, plays with the high motor again. We'll get into him a little bit more if and when he winds up in this Nebraska class. And the next guy that is standing out to me that Nebraska trending for late in this process. And again, Matt Rule, I think if there's one thing that we can say about Matt Rule and how they recruit, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint, right? You had Dylan Arola commit to Ohio State, then commit to Georgia. Nebraska never really gave up on that recruitment, ends up landing him late in the process. I think you could say the same thing for Grant Bricks. At times, you thought he was trending to Kansas State or Oklahoma. Nebraska and the staff, they continue to kind of be a dog on the bone in terms of some of these kids. And a guy like Kamir Prescott is a really interesting prospect who was committed to Wisconsin, backs off his commitment. You have Penn State coming in. You have Wisconsin continuing to get him in West Virginia. Kamir Prescott, when I dive into the film of him, very similar conversation we had with Keona Willite. The versatility is the thing that stands out the most. Just like we talked about Keona what lining up as a three-tech, as an edge defender, a guy like Kamir Prescott, you'll see him line up as a boundary cornerback. You'll see him line up as a nickelback. You'll see him line up as a deep safety. Does a lot of different things on the field, but the first thing you got to talk about is the traits that he has. 6'1", 190 pounds, really good length, but also runs a 10 on the 100-meter dash. So this is a guy that has a ton of length, but he also has a lot of long speed too that I think makes you most excited about what Kamir Prescott could do in the back end of this Nebraska defense. And again, the versatility, we talked about this when we did our deep dive to the Nebraska secondary, that ability to play a lot of different positions and do a lot of different things is really coveted by Tony White and the staff. And I think Kamir Prescott kind of fits it to a T. Now, when you get into the film with Kamir Prescott, you want to see him play in a little bit more of a controlled manner. You just see kind of a freak athlete flying around the football field, which is really not so rare when you're talking about high school kids who are that athletic, but you want to see him kind of get coached up a little bit raw in terms of how he plays the game. You expect that to kind of get not cleaned up or fair. I guess cleaned up would be the right term when he gets to Nebraska. I like him most as kind of closer to the football. So maybe that nickel roll, maybe a box safety. Again, 6'1", 190, probably gets up to 200, 210 pounds as he gets on campus. A guy that could maybe maybe be that box safety. Kind of play the role that Isaac Gifford might play for Nebraska right now. But at the end of the day, you have a ton of position versatility, but more importantly, a ton of athleticism and upside. And that's something that Nebraska has really coveted. They want speed. They want guys coming in who maybe need a little bit more polish, but have a ton of upside. And so they might be a little under the radar in terms of recruiting services because they're not necessarily the polished five-star prospect, but guys that are coming in with a lot of high-end athleticism, a lot of high-end upside, and then you get them coached up. And I think a guy like Kamir Prescott excuse me, is a guy that probably kind of fits that to a T right? Ton of length, ton of speed, just needs a little bit more polish. I'm really excited to see how this one shakes out. Again, Keona Willett, Kamir Prescott committing to Nebraska, kind of having Nebraska finish with a top 20 class in the country, but you combine that with what they've done in the transfer portal. Really big fan of what Nebraska has done building this roster out the last couple of days. We'll continue to keep you guys updated, probably hopping back on tomorrow to recap what Nebraska does on signing day. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. Again, this is something 
I absolutely love doing. Love talking the recruiting trail. Cannot thank you guys enough for rocking with the fellas. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later.